Well, she sneaks around the world from Berlin to Carolina. She's a sticky fingered filcher from Berlin down to Belize. She's taking for a ride on a slow boat to China. Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Who's here? <laughs> it's the Hollywood Squares. Uh, welcome to the special edition of the Rockefeller Hangout, which is really the Carmen San Diego Hangout because of this awesome person messing up the flow. Are, are we with you every day? Every day, in my <laughs> heart. In my heart. Uh, mm. Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, I know we're only on YouTube right now. We've got Katie saying hello already. Hello, Katie. She's first in. Uh, we are brought to you by a lovely, lovely thing, which is that you can get a special autographed photo. Take away the words on the upper left. Special autographed photo, which is at streamily.com slash Carmen San Diego, and you'll be able to see a bunch of individual photos as well if you want that. You know, some people want a picture of Sean Altman in their kitchen. So, um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get Thanks right for the sarcasm, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody okay? Oh, you drink, what are you drinking, Sean? It is uh, 1.5 parts gin and one part lime juice and a little bit of simple syrup. Very nice. So this will not be shown in Utah. That's right. And and all the kid all the kids who watch Carmen San Diego are old enough to drink now, so <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, middle-aged people. Hello, middle-aged people. <laughs> yeah. well, Thank you for um, staying with us. Yeah. Here's Carla. <laughs> Carla's in L.A. Uh, I'm, oh, thanks, Carla. I actually saw her the other day uh, because I'm in L.A. The reason I'm with Greg here is I'm seeing my brother's play. And Carla was at the play. Thank you so much. Hi, Lacey. Wow. I'm in Utah. Hey. <laughs> Don't make fun of Sorry. Utah. Are you drinking? <laughs> I didn't think so. Are you drinking? <laughs> wow. We love you, Utah. We love you. Um, so we've got a lot of nice questions coming in. We will have a few on the feed. We've also got some from the hangout at rockapella.com email box. Uh, Greg, how's life? Life's good, thank you. Yeah? Yeah, it's good to be here. The sun is shining in California. It's a rough, rough March day today, yes. It's Terrible. Tough. I I, I can see the sun out the window right now. Yeah. Uh, I think that I went far from home, but I think Scott is the furthest from home. Yeah, he was. Scott, you, you can own up to say where you are. But you are definitely far, I can just confirm that. What would you like to confirm? I'm uh, being <laughs> held in the Middle East. <laughs> 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 Sean, you're in New York City. Is you that right? You can see where I am with my. Oh yeah, well, you know, the, the, the only way we're gonna, the only way we're gonna, we're gonna be able to raise enough money to Dad. get Scott back from his Dubai kidnappers, is if you buy hundreds and hundreds of our autographed merchandise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what that one? <laughs> oh. Yeah. That is pretty nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scott, show Scott. us on the doll where the Dubai kidnappers hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blink twice. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> hey, anybody who works in Dubai makes a lot of money. So I, that's right. We'll just say, um, Elliot, you are not in New York City. That's a rare thing. Are you on vacation? I'm somewhere? not. I'm on vacation. Let's see. I, I can see. maybe Ooh. see the ocean right there. I'm in the mm -hmm. outer banks of North Carolina. That is it, obviously a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's spectacular here. I've been here for three weeks. Going home Don't tomorrow. Rub it in. <laughs> Barry, you're in Los Angeles, is that right? Or no, I'm back. Home? I'm back in the in the frigid northeast, uh, where the wind is howling and the snow is blowing. Is it really? Oh, I missed it. Really? Wow. Yeah. Uh, Aerie, hey, Bear, is that? Is is that... I can feel it. What? Hmm? Hey, Bear, is that thing you're sitting on? Is it as fuzzy as it looks, or is it an Yes, illusion it of the is. Screen. No, it's fuzzy. It's, 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 it's very fuzzy and warm. Are you naked from the waist down? <laughs> I would be. You know, <laughs> most days, most days, yeah. But aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, that's COVID. Yeah. You know, I refuse to answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's COVID. Uh, Renee you know? says it's it's very windy in Massachusetts, um, mm. and I think Captain's World, nineteen eighty six. Hey, folks from North Carolina. Hi there. Yeah. 
So um, it's an awesome day to be together. <clears throat> There's one person missing. Yes, there is. Our friend yes. Lynn Thigpen. And Lynn is no longer with us in physical form. Mm. But uh, this is actually the anniversary of her passing. And we wanted to be uh, loving and respectful to this wonderful person. So uh, I was able to reach out to her partner, longtime partner, Larry. And Larry uh, spoke to me about Lynn, just a brief thing, and I just wanted to play that for everybody. So let's go. I met her first in college at the University of Illinois. She was lots of fun, a, a wild sense of humor, not really conscious of herself as, as being a star ever. Um, very much somebody who felt she was part of the working project, um, always worked with well with the crews and with everybody else on whatever project or movie or TV show she was in, always having fun, always working hard, amazing imagination. She was doing off-Broadway theater at the same time. Um, the casting call for Where in the World is Carmen San Diego came up, and she said, I don't know if I can do this. And I said, go take the interview. It's, it's you know, what can, what can it hurt? It's, you know, it's PBS. She had a lot of fun doing that. She expressed that a lot. She enjoyed going to work, even if it meant um, getting up, you know, at six in the morning and then doing Carmen and then coming back, changing clothes, going to the theater and working again until 10.30 or 11 at night. She would come home pretty much energized uh, by the experience each day and, uh, and the fun they had. It was a lot of fun and everybody was nice. She really was proud of the, the work that, that they accomplished as this team, uh, doing this stuff um, ad hoc, a lot of it improvised. She really, really enjoyed working with the people. Thanks, Lynn. Lynn was a Tony winner. Mm -hmm. She was on the original Godspell movie. She was um, <coughs> Bear in the Big Blue House. She cornered the children's That's market. Right. That's right. Two Carmen Sandiego she video games. She That's played it. the, uh, she was the stage manager in the movie Tootsie. Tootsie, That's right. right. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. She, it's amazing what you find. Uh, I wanna go back and watch that film, yeah. it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. great singer. Great singer. That's yeah, right. Great. Sorry, I, yeah, I remember being a, a little bit. It, I was in, a little bit in awe of her because she, she was so good and so professional. But she was always really kind. Um, you know, I, yeah. I, I felt like I was, not much of an actor, and she was. But she was always really sweet to me and very encouraging. And I'm just always grateful to her for that, as opposed to Greg Lee, who was a total <laughs> asshole to me. Well, I was. And it, oh, was back here? I did. oh shit. I'm glad you made that distinction for everyone so we know. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, oh, and someone also said she was also on Lean on Me. That's I didn't know correct. That. Huge, huge. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, so we've got a lot of awesome photos. Let's just remind people who just got here that we are <clears throat> also appearing the 18th, which is coming right up. Uh, we won't be quite as fancy as this live stream, but mm. we will be signing autographs. This is the autograph. Take away the text in the upper left and ignore Lincoln bio. There is no bio. But uh, this is the autograph thing that we will be signing. As you can see, people who have the soundtrack album, it echoes the artwork of the CD. And everyone's hair is really good. And uh, <laughs> we, I encourage you to pick that up. Take a look at streamily.com slash Carmen San Diego. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a lot of questions coming in. So I'm going to go to the, the fancy question slash video. I got to put up the missing cameras here. Let's see. We've got it. <coughs> Uh, if you have questions, you can type them in the chat, and we'll do our best to get to those questions. There are a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, there's Scott. There's Scott. Boom. Okay. <clears throat> and just as a background, I'm going to play uh, uh, quietly the behind the scenes, <laughs> very quietly, because we know what's on there, uh, behind the scenes video from this is And the first welcome day. to opening day for oh, Carmen San Diego. Yeah. So now it's quiet. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. Well, I'll get you your own copy. Beautiful. Yeah. So um, right up top, 
on the email situation, we've got a question. Which word on the street segment did you like the best? And there's so many, so I'm going to say, what do you remember the best? That's probably the best question. And anyone can chime in. Word on the street, word on the street is... For any of them. Any of them. They were all pretty darn clever. Yeah, they were pretty fun. Yeah. I, I can't remember one in, in particular. I remember the chase is more than I remember the... What was your favorite chase? <laughs> well, I, I don't think this is... Um, I don't think I made this up in my head. And Scott, you can back me up on this. But I always think about the time when there was a, a, a chase that came through. And you guys had all come through. And Scott was the last guy. And you went to jump behind me there was that big window and you went to jump through the window and they put oh, up a yeah. screen wow <laughs> but you didn't know it and i didn't know there was one there either and when you went through the screen it just the whole half of the office just went like that you know oh my gosh that was hilarious in that case was. people don't know on television nothing is real building really? <laughs> which was a surprise to me it, it was the first time i read it um th there are a few questions like this so you're gonna have to dig into your memory yeah. guys sorry um hey rockapella i must be What's that, Scotty? I'm trying to think of word of the street. Uh, oh, yeah. Me oh, too. The uh, Humo really Humo Nuku Nuku Apua. How about that one? I didn't memorize it, but. Humo Humo Nuku Nuku Apua. Oh, right. Vivian, right. Vivian remembered that one. I remembered it. As soon as she said it, I remembered it. Yeah, I remember. Um, this one, I don't know what this means. The word on the street when they took Greg's clothes. I think I'd remember oh, yeah. I wish I'd remember that one. <laughs> took my clothes? The, that, the word on the yeah, street was what, what that Goodwill? <laughs> well said. What is that? Um, so, Greg, let's keep talking about Lynn and you because yeah. you you did the Lynn pre-taped uh, most of her. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. After that first year, the first year was the one that just was sort of like everybody just, uh, hold on and here we go, you know, and that we just did everything live and including Greg and Lynn's office and then everything the guys were doing. Everything just kind of we started and then we just went. And occasionally change the rules as we progressed, you know, through different different rounds and such. But yeah, by the, I think it's by the second year is when we figured out to have her do her segment earlier. And and now that Larry mentioned it in the in the pre tape that uh, I'd forgotten that she had she was still doing things that at night still. So she was oh, she wow. would come and do our show and then go do stuff at night. And so I think we had to do it that way too. But it also stuff. Worked, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it also yeah, yeah. worked better that we would just get all of her stuff out of the way. I think like the first, it took us maybe two weeks to do all of her stuff and then hmm. and we would do the rest of the show without her. And speaking of her singing, didn't she do an overdubbed, uh, like a Motown backup girls thing with multi yeah. multiple lens? Yeah, the Acmets. The Acmets. The Acmets. Right. The Acmets. Yes. Just so spectacular, talented, or like talented three or four things. Yeah. 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 Do you have a favorite? Uh, do you remember any? Some of them are pretty crazy. Well, the best, <laughs> the, my favorite was Mr. Lee when she did Mr. Lee, of course. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. My little theme song. Yeah. yeah. It was just great. They were all great. Yeah. Uh, Greg, I, I'm reading this directly off the email. Greg mm -hmm. and Barry, which of the two sketches were your favorite? <clears throat> Mr. Pump, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Pumpkin, pumpkin Cleaner. I can never say that word. Or Greg my is. buddy Buzz. <laughs> buddy Buzz or a Pumpkin Clanger. How about that? Buzz. I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of these best questions, but isn't it all great? <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you like doing more, well, Barry? Well, you know, I, I have a, a special affection for, for Mrs. P. Yeah, I do too. She, the, she, 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 was, she, was, she was really something else. So, and, and I like the relationship that, that she had with Greg. <laughs> Very mysterious. We, we'll never know, will we? <laughs> But there was, was a spinoff. They, they, ran a, they ran a poker room in the back of the... <laughs> there was a very short-lived spinoff that we did. About, about three oh, episodes. That's a great just idea. the two of us. Yeah, it was great. I it's, like the I baby know. that and Barry I'm, did. The baby, yes, the baby. <laughs> oh, the big maybe baby. Greg, yeah. Maybe Greg fathered that baby through his coffee <laughs> Wow. I suppose. Well, if he did, if he was the father, he abused the baby, man. There was that one time <laughs> he smashed me in the mouth with a binky. Oh, I guess gosh. I, me up. I forgot all about that. <laughs> Barry, did you shoot Pumpkin Clanger up high? How high up were you? The illusion of television. How high were you really in the set? I was probably about 10 feet off of the ground. Really? They really did it? Yeah, they were. Wow. Okay. Right. We ha I, had, I had a window, a you know, second story window. So they could so, just angle yeah. up, yeah. The hard the yeah, one did... The hard one for Barry to do, I think, was the Kafka, where you were the where you were the, roach. Oh, the cockroach. 
you had to get yeah. this very tiny space to get into. Well, um, the, 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 that was not as bad as the costume. That's, I just I would I would just sit in that thing and sweat. <laughs> Sean, do you remember um, chasing you through the audience? Greg was chasing you through the audience with a snowball. Do you remember that one? Very well. Yes, do. that's very, uh, very that's well. on YouTube, and and that's one of the ones that I I I've seen a lot. And, yeah, and, and even uh, if I'm it... proud of my my limited acting abilities in that one. Spectacular! That was <laughs> like fantastic. when Greg finally hits me with the snowball, and I fell and I sort of slithered down the the uh, the office wall. I was very proud of that. Spectacular. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was really messy. I would remember uh, I would but, you remember know, that. I, I'm watching these I'm watching this footage and it's so Blair Witch crazy. It's kind yeah. of amazing. It's distracting. I mean, I this is I Jonathan I, um, this is producer Jonathan Meath oh, who is yeah. now oh, a professional me. Santa Claus. Is he really? And when Rockapella was on tour with the Boston Pops, the holiday tour, he was one of the Santas. Really? And he came up in full, and he was like, it's me! <laughs> I can see him as a So the, uh, let's see, the, we got another one here. Uh, the Flipboard, um, let's see, was used to find the blah, 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 oh, blah. The um, second round. Thing. How did it operate? Well, wasn't it was a guy back there? Was it the same guy for all five seasons? No, no, Six seasons? I don't think so. Unless you guys know differently, but it was it was two people. I think for sure it took to to run that. Yeah, and just the snappy. That's probably the way every game show did their. Probably in those days. There was yeah. nothing really magically technological. No. But my favorite part really? of that, of course, was when these guys would come up with the. <laughs> That's right. Things, but also when would... the thing. Yeah, when the things would yeah, fall off. Oh hey, um, I for some I, I don't oh, know if what? I stole this or if it was given to oh. me, but I that's, ended up with oh it. My God. Oh man, that, that's an easy five line. grand on eBay. F C. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right? wow. <laughs> that's something. Sean's ready to NFT his warrant sign. That is the warrant from all seasons. Um, what's pre I don't know, but I. Maybe I just took it. I have no idea. I mean, maybe, maybe I, I think there was took it. Maybe. Took it. There was, maybe. Um, but maybe. What's really I don't cool know how that, I got it. Maybe. Is that it? Um, it's Patty there's Larson. A, there's a lot of text on it. <laughs> and uh, I asked McPaul Smith and, um, and Jamie Greenberg, and neither of them remembers who wrote it. But they don't really? think it was them. You can make but, yeah, two grand. A lot of kind of. <laughs> Fun, Katie, Katie says two grand, it. Sean. Let's go, says Katie. She's on it. I go think we can, we, I, we can probably raise the stakes at this point. So. Go, Katie. It's free eBay. What if we ad. sign it? Oh. Yeah. Phil. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, then I, we'll have a bidding war. If it weren't for the delay, we would. I would say you, they should sing the warrant, but that's not going to happen. Oh, the delay is so terrible. That, I also I have a... Um, wait. This is Billy Strauss. Really? That was Billy Strauss, everybody. Oh, yeah. That's the guy, you know, changing my life, Billy Strauss for Rockapella. That's a terrible shot of him. That's, that's Phil, Phil. That's Phil, our road manager. Many uh, yeah. road manager. You guys hired him out of Carmen, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Right. And I work with Phil. And Billy, uh, Bill, and Billy, the banana. <laughs> for I think season five, he was hired to mix, record and mix the clues, right? Hmm. Oh, I know he was on really? set because we, we pre-recorded all yeah, those right. clues on the yes. last season. There's Phil. Yes. <clears throat> Phil's great. Um, I think he won a daytime Emmy for the I sound, think he did. Music. I think he did. I think he and may the, have, yeah. The props the people wow. did too. All those wonderful props. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mayim Bialik. Oh, from... Um, mm -hmm. third, Jeopardy? Jeopardy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now Jeopardy. And, uh, I used to say Jeopardy. She was on. Uh, was Blossom. Yeah. Blossom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What other? Uh, I've got Tatiana Ali. This is yes. a comment. Uh, did you get to talk to any of them, or did they kind of were no, they we, ushered in and ushered out? No, we had a. Weren't they? I think we had a celebrity show with them, didn't we? I was before my time. I believe we did. Do you guys remember? I think we had it. We didn't. We have a celebrity show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember her being on the show, and I remember uh, <laughs> that other host, Mark something. Mark Summers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, there. And you wore the identical. David yeah. Cassidy, yes, yes. I remember, David, I, remember. I remember talking to David Cassidy. Yeah. You got to hang out? What'd you say? Was it on the yeah. side of the stage or like sitting down I, with coffee? I think it was sitting down on the stairs of the office. 
That's cool. Oh, Fern. Oh, Fern. People I just saw lovely. that too. Who's the makeup room? Fern is our uh, was the makeup makeup person. She'd be Shout wonderful out. to work with. Yeah, she's color. amazing. Uh, Sean, uh, how, this is a big one. Probably you've told it many times, but sure. how did you come up with oh. Who Up Hootin' Boobay? <laughs> okay, so this is a little, it's a little embarrassing seconds. because <laughs> the song that David Yazbek and I were trying to mimic, or the groove we were trying to mimic, was a, a song by this uh, a, a group that was on the radio called Jane's Addiction and the song was Caught Stealing and this oh, and the, stealing, yeah. it's a really funky groove it's I like dang 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 but for some reason <laughs> it got uh the way that I, I was able to approximate it on the demo was going who up who boobie who up <laughs> so not nearly as funky as I had hoped but hey it's stuck forward. so fast forward over that yeah, strange right. thing <laughs> that's great <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, Rockapella often did uh, um, cover songs as a band. Oh. The the stage setup, I got to do a few of those. But uh, do you guys remember? I remember working out the arrangements in Scott's apartment, at least for season five, and then a lot of those arrangements ended up on the road. Is that a fair statement, Scott? Oh, the covers that we worked road, out on your, your dining table. Yeah, I remember like a the lot covers. of the. Uh, the covers probably. that we had to do, yeah. yeah Sean, probably, do you have any? They probably probably expanded on them, I guess. Yeah. We did some that we were already, do they would do songs that we already knew, like Pretty Woman and some other things that were easy, so we did just change the lyrics. Hmm. I remember when you guys pre-recorded uh, the Beatles tune, I forget what it was. Oh, yeah, was But good. when you uh, ended yesterday. up- Yesterday. Yeah, when you ended up yesterday. like, the, like yeah. the cover. That was amazing. There was, yeah, was there was a gasp in the studio, because I don't, I think we, you pre-recorded I think, right? there were no kids there. It was just us, yeah. you know, the crew. Right. And we yes. were all just like, when, it, when, when, it, when that final thing hit and the, and the final image was there, we were just, all in tears. I mean, it was just oh my God. perfect, man. It <laughs> that was, was just great. That fantastic. Was oh man, that just took my breath away, man. That was a great one. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, <laughs> that was memorable. Yeah. Uh, Very good. The... Elliot doing Elvis was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's. Uh, <laughs> I think he was on the intro video. I found that clip. Yeah, I was. I just remembered. <laughs> literally, I was watching you, Scott, in a, in a like a cowboy outfit, and I just remembered back in the heart of Bob Wills. I have no idea oh, why yeah. that came into my head. Deep in the heart of oh. yeah, That's it. Deep in the heart of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was fun. That sounded good. If I I've recall. got a, uh, a little comment here. Greg, tell everybody how you met your lovely wife. Oh. On set. <laughs> that must be from my lovely wife. It has Host to be. at home. I think that's Adam Wurzel. Oh, Wurzell. that's Adam Wurzel. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, we've told the story. Oh, hey, you... yeah, that's it. We should give a shout out. That, that's another interview with, with all of us. Right. We're trying to expand on that. But the first one was Host at Home. Yeah, yeah, Adam. Yeah, great show and a great host too. Yeah. He's a fantastic host. So you met There's your wife. Huh? I did meet my wife. Pinch Lee was there. Pinch Harris at the time. What was her job? She was one of the producers. I think her actual title was Word Queen. Word Queen. Oh, yes. oh I remember Word that. Queen. Word Queen was in this thing, and you know she was just sort of the one in charge of making sure the. Um, you know, the things were pronounced properly and spelled properly. And I don't know if you guys remember, we I think it was the first season when 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 the Soviet Union broke up and they and all the they had to change uh, the map overnight. Remember the big map had to get changed. Oh, yeah. So she we was had to check, check, check in hmm? Slovakia. Yeah, we had yeah. To change and that. Slovakia. Yeah. So we so when I first started working there, I'm, uh, they assigned her to me to help me with my pronunciations. I have a little trouble reading once in a while, so um, okay. uh, they put her with me, and uh, she was not happy about it. And I will tell you, she was not a nice person for about a year and a half. And I'm not even kidding. And I would say that if she was sitting here right now, because she would agree with me. She was not that nice to me for about a year and a half. But then we got to be buddies, and then there you go. And so, wow. That's how that goes. Gonna be thirty years uh, September. Thirty so. years. No. Okay. We'll wow. Go year. We'll go to two year contracts yeah. after that with a yeah. review, and we'll see. <laughs> oh, you're you're in LA. That's yeah. Well, <laughs> keep everybody on their toes. Oh keep my it gosh. <laughs> well, hey, Sean, Jeff, there's an interesting question here, actually, from Brian. Please. Talking talking about the Carmen music, I have a question. The first track on the Where in the World Is Carmen Sandiego soundtrack is Capital. Was Pierre, South Dakota 
left out on purpose or by accident? <gasps> uh, uh, no, it was intentional. Because uh, what? And not only that, that place. I'm embarrassed uh, to say that. <laughs> so in the, in the outro, I'm screaming, Pierre, Pierre, we forgot Pierre. <laughs> and, but it's pronounced Peter. Peter. But I didn't know that. But then we got the, we got the mayor of Pierre, Gary Drews. Uh, I called him up, and it, 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 it's not that hard to get a small town mayor on the phone, apparently. And he um, he agreed to do that shtick on the record, where he says that he vehemently objects to the callous omission <laughs> of his fine city, and, and then I, and not only that, that I mispronounced it. So we did that intentionally. That was intentional. I, hey, Sean, uh, for those people who haven't seen Adam's wonderful. Uh, show on hosts at home oh, so can can you please uh go back to and everyone else of course um go back to how the producers found rockapella and brought you in like the sequence of events anything yes you remember? Yeah. so uh i was in my apartment on east 10th street in manhattan and the phone rang and i picked it up and it was Dana Calderwood, who was hmm. the original director and one of the creators of, of Carmen San Diego. And he said, "Hey, I saw I saw you and Rockapella on Spike and Company do it acapella, and uh, we're we're putting together a a kids a game show for kids called Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, based on the computer game, which I had never heard of. Uh, would you guys like to come in and audition for the role of house band?" And that was it. That was I had never heard of Carmen San yes, Diego. <laughs> we we were not a, our only experience singing for kids was horrible. We would do uh, bar mitzvahs on Long Island, and kids would would jeer at us and make fun of us. Kids were, the kids were merciless toward us. So the idea that we would end up being a a family act was. Oh, very I've never heard uh, that. That's funny. Uh, unusual and preposterous. Wow. That's funny. Unusual and preposterous. Rockefeller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Greg, tell us about them reaching out to you. You've done a lot of television. I did. A, I what were you doing at fair, the time? Were you doing something before? Or? I did a fair amount of a lot of Nickelodeon stuff, and uh, I'd worked with a lot of the producers, Howard Blumenthal and Danny Calderwood, and. A, some, some others. So they, uh, they liked you. They, well, they knew me from, I did, used to do audience warm up a lot and a little bit of hosting for Nickelodeon. And um, I think that was the only reason I was still in the game because they wanted somebody originally that was, you know, I traveled a lot, <laughs> spoke a lot of languages, and, which that was not my bag. But I think what they liked was that I didn't get too uptight about things going poorly. <laughs> <laughs> or being surprising as we in the along. midst of low budget yeah, I, glory kinda, yeah kind of like that stuff <laughs> i think it's kind of fun so um i think that was the one reason that i was still in the game for a while there because it they i think they looked at a lot of people like 300 people or something so it was a oh my god it was it was just not something i was expecting to get i remember just thinking well, i'll probably get a warm-up gig from this or maybe some writing or something which i'd be happy with and larry mentioned uh that lynn was like gee i'm not sure yeah. And was that kind of your reaction, or did you be like, oh, well, whatever, let's go? Oh, for me to, to yeah, be for your oh, reaction. Oh, no, I was yeah. thrilled to be on it. I was just surprised that surprised. I was going to be on it. Yeah, I was, I was, it, it took me by surprise. Mm. I, I was doing it basically because I thought I would get a warm up gig. Maybe an announce and maybe a. And, and you said they might be looking for someone who had language skills. Does that mean that their original intent was that you'd welcome people in different languages? I don't know what it was. I cosmopolitan just, host. I just know the guys I was up against, and I remember the last final audition, and they were so tall and lots of hair, and they were gorgeous, and they traveled <laughs> everywhere, and they'd been everywhere, and oh man. And it was just not going to be good because I was looking through the door, you know, seeing who I was up against. I said, well, this is maybe I'll get a warm-up game. Was there a line of guys? Friend, at, friendly guys? At like that you? time, <laughs> for that final, final callback when you go in front of all the big shots, you know, it was just the three guys. With, mm. with the last three guys. Then I was knew I would not get it because they were very talented guys and just very camera Hey, Greg. Um, yes, yes. Hey, Greg, did, uh, <laughs> speaking of warm-up, didn't Mike Sweeney do a bunch of warm-up? He did. He did warm up for us, didn't he? Yeah, and now and then he then then he became like the head writer for 
Conan or somebody. Yeah, right? something huge. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And you know, Dana Calder would uh, direct it for Conan the first year. Right, yeah. right. I heard that somewhere. Yeah. Wow. Um, let's see what else here. Scott, uh, tell us about that early, that first season where it's in a different location from the next seasons, as I understand it. That's, is that right? Uh, I was in Chelsea, Chelsea, right? The first season was down in the middle like, of um, Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah, it was 20, like on 26th Street or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 26th Street. Yeah. Um, it was kind of crazy because, like Greg said, the whole show was, would you tape it from straight through? So we had to like do our numbers live, do the middle game live, do the chase the end game live. It was just, it was more like Keystone Cops kind of thing. I could have figured out we can do it better. So it was stressful. We would get up, we get picked up early in the morning from our apartments and driven out, driven out, which was a lot better than when we had to drive all the way to Astoria. But yeah. um, we'd show up and buckle up and start going for it and, and everything yeah. was like with the word of the street was you know kind of down and dirty you remember, remember remember it really quick you get it that day or right before the scene or whatever and try to memorize this paragraph or two oh. and then lay it out and then if we had a yeah. song you go right into it and it was it was uh it was fun i guess when i look back it was i think of it as a lot of work but but it was a lot of fun. And, and, yeah and plus, the good thing is that the ending, we would kind of we would lip sync to some things, like the opening. That was probably from the first season, wasn't it? We were lip syncing for the, like the opening in the alley, and then the closing song. We weren't singing live, so that was easy. Yeah. And other than then, once it, once we got to the other seasons where we um, pre-taped all the singing, it was pretty laid back because it was like we were just like oh just roll tape. And then we'd have to do one or two things each show. And then the middle, the middle game, we'd have to, we could focus on our list of naughty little words to try to fit into the uh, middle game. Got kicked down a lot. <laughs> Stop. I, I, I can't yeah. imagine front to back. Like, it's such an illogical decision. <laughs> like, who was thinking that would be? Um, I just don't think we'd ever. <laughs> I don't know. I think the hardest thing for me that first year was just because, I'll, seriously, I don't know if you guys remember, but a lot of the rules changed as we went along. I don't know if you remember that. Like, yeah. just even how that middle part yeah. worked. And then mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think they had to get eight places in 45 seconds, but they had me read the big list of clues beforehand. Mm -hmm. So parents oh, would yeah, get mad yeah, at me because yeah. I'm not reading fast yes! enough. <laughs> so, much, so much angst. <laughs> I could, you know, I'd just be blazing through the clues. And they'd be, why is that guy reading so slow? Oh you know, God. he's eating up all my kids' time, which I was like, oh. Uh, this, this was covered on Adam's interview also, but uh, Sean and Scott and Elliot, let's talk about the Flipboard. Um, for people who don't know, you guys were doing it live, just off camera, like hovering over the set. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, Jeff, isn't there some some footage of us doing I that? Would, I wouldn't know where to find it on this reel, but it's there. <laughs> oh, on this thing? Yeah, we, we oh. were uh, we were like, you know, literally right right out of camera range, to the left of the board. But still in my eye line, as I recall. Yeah. I can't. I don't know where it is. So hard. To, and of it course, was just so so hard to concentrate because. And of you know, course, guess, we were trying, we were trying desperately to crack you up. But and it, <laughs> that's right. So there, worked. there was a competition. You were constantly laughing at what they came up with. Well, because I could see them off to the side, and they'd be going through their list. And, like, and you didn't want to know ahead of time. You wanted to be surprised. Yeah, of course, it was the fun and when part. When you're repeating all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to pay attention to the game, but. The, I getting distracted by them because right. you know, it's going to be funny. Right, so. right, right. And, and we would we would always have more than we needed because we didn't know how quick yeah. the kid was going right. to oh, get yeah. the thing. So That's right. A lot, a lot of our finest work was uh, never made oh, it on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I Sometimes wish you kept you're like, those. Oh, come, are you kidding? <laughs> you got it too fast. The kid got it too fast. We have better stuff. That's probably why we never won an Emmy. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you were saving the good stuff to the end, and you never got to it. Oh, man. Um, somebody just wrote, uh, Vivian just wrote, low budget, when stuff fell off the board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yes. yes. Love Dude, that. You got, oh, do you remember, too, at that same, that same second round, when the kids pull that thing to put Carmen in jail? Oh, yeah. They pulled the chain, and I was told. Oh, wow. I was told. Yeah, I was told everywhere. It's not connected to anything. 
Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but what, every time everywhere I went, kids would say, "Well, that's one of my favorite parts when you do that." And then they catch the c cartoon, you know, or the animation of that going. Oh, down. yeah. And so I remember seeing every once in a while you'd see a kid with a little bit of disappointment as they would look up and see there's and nothing, there's on nothing there. above them. It's just kind of on oh, television. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Oh, no, Sorry. No sound you know, effect. Nothing. No sound effect. That, no. that, that rocked the world of some nice. 40 something out there right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, kid, nothing's going to happen. Um, let's talk quickly about uh, Phil the Barber. Oh! I, I count myself oh, yes. lucky that because I was the new kid, I got to do like three Phil the Barbers <laughs> with giant hair on. But Oh, yes. Yeah. Did that, was that coming from someone in your life? Well, there's an old character I've done for a long time called Brother Preacher, which is oh, like. Yes. Uh, uh, it's sort of, I say it's sort of my dad and sort of my cousin and sort of me and a lot of guys I grew up with. Uh, but I, I think he was so, basically was... You're from? Uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma. Nebraska, Yeah, Oklahoma. yeah. yeah. And um, my dad was a preacher and uh, it was sort of a character based on some of those people that I knew. And then uh, I think we just made him into a... It was just and turned the preacher. volume up on Yeah, me. Brother Preacher <laughs> became a barber. Yeah. That's right. Which my favorite uh, episode, of course, was that very last one with Sean when Phil, we brought Phil oh, the Barber yeah. out. Oh, right. Sean, let's talk about, not, we don't have to obsess over this, but uh, mm. I know that uh, for people who've known Rockapella a long time, your braids were, oh God, he had them ready. I knew he had them ready. He had them ready. They're, in a, they're in a nasty little plastic bag. Okay, <laughs> am I allowed to say that now that it's legal, and I don't even smoke, but I'm, re I'm trying to find the braids, and all I'm finding is like this marijuana. <laughs> oh my God. Stop, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> I was going to say, people, you, people keep giving it to me, marijuana. I know, but I do have the braids. Yeah. You're like one wow, of those child wow. stars gone bad. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Real bad. So the question I is, do have if, the braids. if you add a few of those to the warrant, NFT. on, does that get you more money? Like eBay package deal, braids and warrants. I don't know. I got uh, to figure out what to twice do the price. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good. This is the good <laughs> stuff. And when Phil the Barber cut those off, the other guys didn't stuff. know we were going to cut them off. That's right. You can, the no, clip is out there. In fact, it might be on this reel, but uh, we didn't know. I didn't know. You knew. I knew I was going to cut them off. And there's a video at the, on the credit we roll. We didn't know you would Scott. end our career. <laughs> That's right. It was, uh, each, it's <laughs> over. Per braid, a little five-year period. It was period the level. last taped episode. <laughs> Which is pretty uh, awesome. You, can't, you can only take up staging so many times, it so was. many years. Didn't you tell me, Sean, I don't want to embarrass you, but we were in a recording session, uh, I think Carmen San Diego, Out of This World, the second album. And didn't you tell me that the XTC guy who co wrote or wrote Cherry in Your Tree, was it? Yeah, commented, he wrote it. Yeah. Com commented on your braids. Is that something? I don't remember that, but he may have. Uh, in the song, and he's one. He's one of my idols too. So if he said something bad, I probably put it out of my mind. Sorry, I got um, that from somewhere. But the, you know the, the, <laughs> we'll the weird thing about the table. Table. <laughs> you know, in in see, after a, one or two episodes of season one, Howard Blumenthal, the creator and uh, producer of Carmen San Diego, sat me down and he said, um, "We've talked about it and." Um, We'd like you to cut your braids. Oh, <gasps> and really? Yeah, and what I, season? At the very beginning, like while we were still doing oh, stuff. Oh, really? Wow. And I said, and I said, I said no. And in retrospect, <laughs> if somebody gave me the opportunity to be on a TV show now and told me to cut off my arm, I would say okay. <laughs> <laughs> the power of television. I'm like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> it's true. Um, yep. I remember the first and at the season. time I, I felt so uh, this righteous indignation like that's how good. dare Rockstar. he you know they hired me because of this look and now they want me to cut them off <laughs> then, yeah uh, years later Howard said to me you know I remember when I asked you to do that and um, and I regret that and, and we were wrong and he, he apologized and they were I think they were grateful that oh what's this the shot? braids for you know <laughs> it's funny because now <laughs> When I look back at that now, it's well, they, they it wouldn't fly now. I think it would it would be um, categorized as cultural appropriation, but in the in the mid nineties, in the early nineties, it wasn't, uh, and it was just <laughs> kind of goofy. So this is a rare right now on screen. That's a rare moment when she was on there with us because that's Sean's camera. Oh, same day, right, same day. 
Yeah. So that's a that's a moment when she came back. Maybe yeah. a pickup of some kind. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe the last show. Oh, very cool. She's on a keyboard, I believe, singing. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh, there he is. I'm, I think I think most of the stuff we're watching is season four, or season five, because it's uh, Hugh Martin is directing. Definitely mm -hmm. five. Somebody asked. Yeah. We, yeah. That was, was one he, of the questions. Uh, was he on for was just the last season or four, season four and five? Uh, five. As I understand it, they brought I thought he was on for the last <clears throat> two, at least. I think two. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was when somebody um, asked that question. Who's the guy with the glasses? That's Hugh Martin. The that's director. Hugh Martin, oh, yeah. the director. Yeah. Great director. Great yeah. Director. Rob Rice. Jeff, what about the Where in the Universe planetarium footage? Okay, it exists, and it'll probably be on a future Rockapella Hangout episode. So that you'll just have to subscribe to see it. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Um, Rockapella and Lynn. Mm. Once again, pre-tapes, mm. um, I think. Scott, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Pre-taped, she wasn't there, I don't think. The planetarium for, show. For what? For a planetarium oh. show when we were all there. That was that was separate from the, it was, was that right. later? Or it must she have been was later. on it. Yeah, it was later. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I don't, we didn't do it together. We just put yeah. it together afterward. Yeah. Well, guys, this has been great. I, uh, Elliot, can you, have you spotted any other questions that we've missed? Some tasty bits? I, I was looking. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. Um, sorry. No problem. <laughs> um, some of the footage we can't really play the audio on, but we the um, the something we should probably tell, which is very fun, is that there was a lot of dancing in between takes. Oh, yes. And Brian Setzer's "Rainbow oh, on My Shoulder" yes. and right. some uh, Latin thing or something. Would be played by yes. the crew. 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 To keep energy up, would you say? You you tell the story. I think so. It was it was um, uh, Robert Agnello. I think started it's that. Remember you guys? Remember him? Sound. He worked sound. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he started playing it, and it just got everybody kind of dancing, and, and I think it was probably yeah to keep energy up initially, and then it, it kind of became a towards the end. It, I think it kind of became an end of day sort of thing. It was just such a. Such a great little tune. I, I would love to play that, but we would have a licensing issue. Oh, really? There's some great stuff where, yeah. it, it, like on the 10th repeat, like there was literally formation dancing with Rockapella. Like, really? You know, like rushing the camera all together. <laughs> oh, and I've like got to there's see this. great clip. I'll try and find that. Okay. Maybe we can fudge yeah. it and license it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Robert and Yellow was the genius yeah. behind that, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks so much, guys. Um, any parting thoughts, memories? Happy times. We're back. On <laughs> you know, I was, the, the, the backstage footage is sort of weirdly mesmer, mesmerizing because I'm seeing oh, no. people from the crew yeah. that I haven't, who, yeah. haven't seen in a year and since we shot the show. I hope they yeah, that was amazing. went on to great things. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of amazed that they, that they let me do that. I, I mean, I'm, it was a handheld camera. Huh? And I guess nobody cared that I was just shooting a lot. Yeah. Well, what PBS. were you going to do with it? There was no place to put it. You know, you yeah. just kind of watched it at home. I, th yeah. I have a feeling that if it was a TV show now, they would never let somebody mm -hmm. shoot like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. there would be some lockdown. Uh, but what yeah. a treasure! Uh, mm, it's great. Fan, fans. They'd be uh, doing their own behind the scenes, though. There's always a right. behind the scenes. Yeah, that's a good point. They'd be yeah. doing social media content, True. and that's not a bad yeah, idea. Like. Okay. We could, yeah. Pull clips out of that and do some things. Uh, when do we get to see the Carmen San Diego uh, blooper reel? One person wrote here. I think that's probably not something possible. The tapes are in a vault somewhere. Nobody's uh, digitized. Mm -hmm. I tried to put mine into the show so we wouldn't have to have a separate. Yeah, right. <laughs> separate thing. And on that have note, it all <laughs> have it all inclusive. Um, let's just uh, remind people who came late that um, we have a lovely, lovely, look at that. Take away the words in the upper left and the big red thing in the upper right. And we will be signing that live on camera, live on the 18th, which is coming up. So in order to get one of those, you actually have to actually buy one. You pre-order it, it's signed, and then it's shipped to you. And that's what Streamily does. Streamily.com slash Carmen San Diego. And there are also individual photos of the guys uh, if you would like that sort of thing. 
Um, and we can and we, and we and we're going to personalize them. Am we're I going right? to personalize. That's okay. an extra thing. You check the box, and you can get it personalized. Uh, so for those of you who do that, and actually anybody can watch, I think, yeah. and uh, so forth. That'll be on the 18th. Thanks everybody. Wait till you for... see what what you have to personalize for me, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I'm tuning in. Uh, Eric, you ordered my cast pick. Get ahead of the game here because we may come back at some point with them. But once the signing is done, you know, it's hard to, it's hurting cats to get everybody together to do this. That's right. So you better get it. You got yeah. a week. Uh, but thanks so much, guys, for hanging out. And Scott, I wish you sweet dreams in, in Dubai. Good man. Uh, Good man. Thank you. The credit to your. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and uh, Jet Greg and I are going to go get wasted, and uh, you know, that's how it rolls. <laughs> Thanks Smoke so much, everybody. <laughs> uh, see, great to see you guys. Great to see you guys. Great to see you guys. Have a great day, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.